Cook Pottery Paper. Today I'm going to show you how to make a simple mold and decal. What we're going to do is exactly make what's here in front of me. So we have a decal, we have a screen, and we have the bottom mold part. Um, how do we get to all of this? First, let's describe the materials that you're going to need for this. I'm going to set this up here. You're going to need stretcher bars. And this is a perfect tool to make if you don't have a, any woodworking skills or a wood shop at your hands. You don't need anything. It's really just an assembly. So um, these are Frederick brand stretcher bars. Uh, that's just the brand that I have handy. These are not heavy duty. These are the simple bars that you can get. They're lightweight. You're going to need a bamboo brush holder. Um, sometimes they call them a mat, sometimes not, but it's a bamboo brush holder. You're gonna need that. When you um, get your stretcher bars, you're actually going to need four of each size because you have a top and a bottom. You're gonna need weather stripping. So let's go over that again. Stretcher bars, weather stripping, a bamboo, a brush holder mat, and one last piece, a fine mesh. This is a, a piece of screening. It's called no -seum. You're gonna wanna use the no -seum for multiple reasons, and we'll get to that. So first thing you're gonna wanna do is your brush holder mat, once you find one, and we want one that's um, around this size for, so you don't have to have uh, support bars. And what I mean by that, this is a larger Sugetta that is made with a bamboo placemat. These you can purchase through Colophon Book Arts. So you can see this is a bamboo placemat. And what we have here are support bars. The support bars are running perpendicular to the support, to the, the, uh, the placemat itself, to the bamboo. So then we have a solid support. If you have woodworking skills, then, or you know somebody, then you can get the brush mat and um, work on, on that, create that. Back to the simple one. If you've never made one before, this is the one to start with. So you're gonna wanna get something that's around this size, which is pr approximately a 10 by 12. You might find them nine by 13, whatever the brush holder that you come by. And the reason why we're using the brush holder is because it has a nice, uh, for the most part, finer bamboo. This particular placemat that we saw earlier has a slightly smaller bamboo, which offers even more support, um, but it is better than, I would say, a sushi mat because a sushi mat offers too much drainage. It's too open. It's a little cumbersome. It doesn't flex as well, um, but we are actually gonna make a test mold with a sushi mat today, and I'll show you. That's gonna be our makeup. So back to this. Here's our, how do we determine our stretcher bars? We take a ruler. We know that this brush mat holder is 10 by 11 and three quarters. We're gonna round it up to 12, it makes it simple. And we're gonna go ahead and you get an inch bigger than each of those dimensions, 10 by 12. So my stretcher bars are gonna be 11 by 13. Very simple. All right, we're gonna set this aside. The first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna assemble these stretcher bars. Now, <clears throat> you can use a wood glue um, to assemble these. And what you would do is put glue on these points and then just slide, slide your unit together as such. Um, this one has already been glued together and you can see it's very firm and sturdy. It was glued yesterday, so it has 24 hours to to solidify up. I will point out, however, that these go together pretty well. And why, why, why would I not um, glue them together? Let me give you an instance. I went ahead and I traveled uh, overseas um, through graduate studies. I wanted to take a, a mold and decal with me so I could have it on the spot. What well, was easier to travel with something that was like this and stick it in my backpack than it was to have it as a rectangular frame. So that's one reason. Um, for the most part, these are gonna get glued together and form into a solid, a solid structure. 
As you're assembling these with the glue on the corners, you're gonna just make sure that everything is squaring up. If you have a little glue leak through, um, just wipe it off with a damp cloth or with your finger. So basically we're just kind of moving these a little bit in each direction to make sure it squares up because we want them to square up. But really that's all the assembly that you're gonna need to actually create your, um, your, your frames. So we have basically a top is the decal and the bottom is the mold. And that's what we need is two pieces. To finish out this structure, what we're gonna need to do, we're gonna use the one that's already glued and firm. So basically I would glue these the day before. Once again, I'm using a wood glue. You could use anything that you probably have handy because it will lock it in place. These, this isn't meant to sit in water. It's just meant to dip through water and it dries. So it's really just a tacking agent. So we're gonna go ahead and um, one thing we need to do is apply weather stripping to the to want to your top decal. And the reason we do that is because when you put these two stretcher bars, if you notice, there's a ridge on the edge of the stretcher bar. Well, that's because this is meant to stretch a canvas and keep the canvas away from the bar part but um, we're using it for a different purpose. So we have a gap. We have this interior gap right here. So we need to fill that gap. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put weather stripping on it, exactly like this. So it's on the inside, so it creates, creates a really fine, tight edge. Um, this structure will make a uh, this simple Sugeta mold and decal will make lovely paper and it will actually make quite well professionally quality with the skill, if you have skill to achieve it. The other thing that's really important is pulp. If you have really good pulp, you should be able to make really lovely, amazing sheets. So, um, you know, the better the tool, it becomes more efficient. And I do have some really amazing uh, professional mold and decals that I use for my own uh, paper making. Um, but I, I will say that I've made paper on these types of screens for years. And you, as long as your pulp is, is really decent, you can make professional level paper. So we're going to go ahead and uh, put the weather stripping on. So what I'm going to do for that is I'm going to use this two part epoxy. It's a five minute epoxy. Um, Five minutes is plenty of time. It's a resin and a catalyst and they get mixed together. We're gonna actually mix it on this um, piece of uh, top that I can actually just recycle. And then I'm gonna go ahead and take, I like using a plastic spoon and I'm gonna glide it around the edges. I'm gonna go ahead and do this while, you, while, we're, while we're doing this. You probably need a couple We're gonna put out maybe a teaspoon in total. All right, we're gonna kind of wipe that aside. I kind of pull it a little bit back and then I attach the, the lid. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and mix this. Like I said, I just like, once the, the spoon is, is recyclable, so um, I'm happy to use it. I can also let the spoon, the resin dry on it, the, the glue dry on it, the two-part epoxy, and then I can use it again. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to lightly just rub just enough on that edge. I don't need a lot. I just need enough to hold that. And the reason why we're using the epoxy for the weather stripping is because that weather stripping is going to take on a lot of water. That's a lot of space. Um, there will be a sticky side on weather stripping and that's fine for windows because you only touch it typically once and but it won't hold in the wat water in the vat. So we're going to go ahead and epoxy this on so it permanently stays on. I have uh, weather stripping on my uh, decal boxes and my, my molds. Um, on these molds, on, on you know, and on untraditional uh, types of molds, uh, 
and it's lasted for years. The only thing that's happened to it is it usually gets damaged from some other purpose and I have to actually remove the weather stripping and put new stuff on, but it hasn't been the, it, it hasn't been the epoxy that's ruined it. Um, if you care to seal these pieces of wood with an agent prior to making paper, you need to put the weather stripping on first. A lot of uh, sealants that you'll use for wood, um, and I use a beeswax and linseed oil, um, the epoxy doesn't stick to it. So you, you need to definitely put your, do this first before you seal anything. So we have plenty of glue on there. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and put the weather stripping on. I'm not gonna stretch it. I'm just gonna lay it gently in place. Lay it right on that edge. I'm gonna take my scissors to it. I like to overlap the corners a little bit so I make sure that the, there's no leakage at those corners. I'm gonna go ahead and just keep turning it and adding my uh, weather stripping right onto that edge. Realize uh, five minutes is a long time. Just go back, make sure it's all attaching, it's looking really good. This weather stripping is a quarter inch wide, which is, I wouldn't recommend anything smaller. And, and it's about an eighth inch thick. And that, I wouldn't, I don't think you can get anything skinnier than that, but you can definitely go thicker. There's nothing wrong with that. The seal will still work. This just happens to be what I had in my drawer. Um, for my duckle boxes, I typically use a, a slightly uh, thicker weather stripping. Ooh, I don't want that there. All right, we're gonna put that there. Oops, we're gonna add, put that right on the edge there. And I'm gonna go ahead and take my scissors and snip it. So it's still all very malleable, so I can match that corner up, make sure all the corners are, are pulling together so I have block. It looks great. So this has to sit 24 hours. Don't rush the process. Make sure you um, have plenty of dry time before. So what I'm gonna do with this is I'm actually gonna turn it over and I'm gonna set, I can set this on it, but I probably will set a book on it I want some light weight on it just to make sure that weather stripping isn't going to curl up or curl back into, into place. We're gonna go ahead and set that aside. Basically, this is what it's gonna look like. We have uh, the weather stripping going all the way around the epoxy, kind of leaked out in a couple spots, but it's not gonna affect the sheet formula at all. So we're gonna have a nice, clean, rectangular sized sheet. It'll be awesome. The next thing we need to construct here is the mesh on top of the, the fine bamboo. Now, I mentioned no seam. So here is our, our screen we're gonna use. Here is our no seam. Now, if you're gonna uh, order and get some brush holder uh, mats, you might wanna get a couple of them. And I'm gonna show you this when we go and just make a quick sheet so you understand how to use your Sugeta once you have it. This is a polyester mesh. This is uh, a sheer curtain that you would hang, and um, it's just, uh, it's nothing fancy other than um, something that's, uh, it's at a, a home, uh, like a Target or a, or a Walmart, but it's a, it's a thin sheer curtain you would hang in your window, and that's the polyester mesh material. It's, the one thing that's bad about this material is it frays. And even um, sewing and basting in the edge sometimes forms a pucker, which, which is problematic as you're, as you're working with it. This on this right now has a dimensional watermark, and that's a whole nother video to talk about. But for the most part, it's more of a Western modern watermark. It's not an Eastern watermark. The intention of a fine piece of fabric on top of a bamboo screen in an Eastern style mold is meant as a shaw to actually be a watermark. Um, that, um, that also is another discussion. We're gonna show you how to use this. So the, it's smart to purchase two screens, especially if you're curious about how to do multiple things with one, one, uh, one mold and decal. So we'll set that aside. Mm -hmm. 